Hello, this is Peter, 4790 stars and on PC and Xbox Live. Welcome to my review of Tales of Grace's F. As a huge fan of the Tales series, I was very excited to hear of Tales of Grace F being released in North America. The fact that Tales of Grace F is the first Team Destiny Tales game that's getting released to the States made me even more excited. Tales of Grace's F was probably my most anticipated game of 2012, even more so when I couldn't play the game until the 27th because of my vacation to the States on the 13th, which is ironically the day which the game got released. But after all the delay, I finally got the chance to play Tales of Grace's F. And like I say, Tales of Grace's F does not disappoint. After extensively playing through Tales of Grace's F, I would like to give my opinion on the game. Tales of Grace's F is an RPG slash console style RPG that is created by Team Destiny of the Namco Tales Studio and published by Namco Bandai. Visually, the game looks pretty good. Though technically the game is a Wii port, it still does a good job porting from the Wii to the PS3. The visuals are vibrant and very crisp, which really helps the game's graphical style. Though the textures haven't really been improved much, so it's very obvious that the game's origins is on the Wii, if you should look at it very carefully. Though I have to add that the game's animation is very fluid, which really adds to the cutscenes. Environments also look pretty good. Although Tales of Grace F World isn't as big as other Tales games, the games still offer a wide range of environments, from medieval towns such as Grayscale to the desert oasis of Yu Yuberte, and they look great as well. Dungeon design is also pretty good for the most part, and most of the puzzles in the dungeons are pretty easy to solve once you figure it out. Though I sometimes found a few of the dungeons a bit disorientating and personally think that a minimap would really help. Tales of Grace Elf overall plot is pretty good overall, but there are some awkward dialogue issues in some part of the story, but overall, it was still able to interest me from start to finish. The plot starts off with you playing as Asbel Alond when he's a child. What's spoiling anything, special circumstances happen, and he decides to enroll in the Night Academy, where the game does a time skip to where he's around 18. I'd say that I really like how the child arc is implemented, since it gives some background information with most of the characters in the game. Though in the overall package, the plot in the game can be said to be the weaker part of the game. Not to say it's bad, like I say, it's interesting by itself, but it's probably still the weaker part of the game. Though like in all Tales games, there's more emphasis on the characters than the overall plot. I have to say the characters and how to in interact with each other is still great. From Sophie to Hubert, the characters just have so much chemistry with each other, it makes it a joy to see them interact with each other, either by cutscenes, by skits, or even by victory fanfare. Scene. Over in a flash. How long is a flash? It's less than a second. Why is he lying? He's insufferable. The skit presentation is also improved from past Tales games, with full portraits of the characters being displayed. Voice acting is also surprisingly pretty good. I mean, Tales usually have great voice acting, but the trailer got me a bit worried. But I have to say, the overall voice acting is pretty good in Tales Grace itself. Although, adult Richard does seem to have some inconsistency problem at the early parts of the game, but those problems iron out in the later parts of the game, especially in the lineage and legacies arc. Soundtrack is probably the weakest part of Tales Grace's L presentation. Most of the tracks are not very memorable and only really serve to fit the mood of the game, though not to say it's bad by any means, just not that memorable. Overall, Tales Grace Elf got a solid presentation with some issues such as the textures and soundtrack. Gameplay is where Tales of Grace's F really shine. It can be split into the combat system, the dualizing system, the title system, and the LF mixer. The first major change to the, uh, in Tales of Grace F combat system is the chain capacity system, or CC system. Rather than using TP, the game uses the chain capacity system, which allows you to continuously chain arts as long as you have CC left, such as uh, the Demon Fang art costing 2 CC, or the Beast art costing 3 CC, you can continuously chain arts as long as your CC left. Sidestepping also requires chain capacity, which is vital in order to effectively dodge enemies' attack, which in turn can recover you a few CC points and can even avoid damage. CC also regenerates when you stop attacking or guarding. Your base and maximum CC points is determined by various factors, such as what kind of weapon you're equipping, 
There's also a weakness system that you can use to your advantage, which in turn, like dodging, can completely recover your chain capacity. Arts is also divided into two types, which is A Arts and B Arts. A Arts are basically your physical attribute attacks, while B Arts are your magical attribute attacks. Note that unlike previous Tails games, there's no normal attack, so each of your attacks will cause CC. The usage of A and B Arts are also pretty different from each other. Such as for A Arts, you need to chain certain A Arts together in order to use other A Arts, such as you need to go through 1cc, 2cc, 3cc A Arts, in order to use a 4cc A Arts. Though, if you're chaining A and B Arts together, you can go like 1cc, 2cc, 3cc A Arts, then switch to B Arts, and then if you switch back to A Arts, then you can use the 4cc A Arts uh, right away. B Arts are more free, since you can use any of the B Arts from the get go. Combining A and B arts together also has certain benefits, such as reducing cast time for spells for certain magic users, such as Pascal, Mal, the Witcher, or even for Asbel, where you go to chain B arts together, then chain the A arts, it can recover some HP for them. There is also the Elf Break mechanic. The bar on the right is basically the Elf Bar, which is basically the overlimit version of Grace's F. When it fills, your party goes to Elf Break, which allows your character, well, your entire party, to have infinite CC in a short amount of time, so you can continuously chain combos, and you can't be staggered in that short amount of time. And you can also do Mystic Arts later on in the game, though do note that the enemy can also go to Elf Break just like you do, which makes them unstaggerable and they'll be able to use their Mr. Arcs on you if they have one. Overall, the chain capacity system is great. It's simple to pick up, but also rewards you for using the battle mechanics to the best. It also makes mm, combat very quick. The chain capacity system overall makes each of your attack count, so you have to be wise determining what you want to do, such as do you want to keep attacking the enemy to their CC which is 0, or do you want to save some so you can sidestep out of the enemy's reach, or do you want to use the weakness system so you can continuously chain combos together since it recovers all your chain capacity if you exploit all the weaknesses. The CC system ultimately rewards you for your ability to using the sidestepping and weakness mechanics to its fullest. Each character also plays very differently from each other, especially with ESO mode being introduced in the lineage and legacy arc, which makes combat system even more enjoyable. There's also the title system, which is a means to increase your overall stats, their new arts, their mystic arts, or even alter a few arts, such as altering the sparrow seal art into a beast art if you hold O. Kinda of like the weapon system skill that was in Vesperia. Learning each title rank, which requires SP points, which is earned through any request or battle, lets you learn that ability, such as learning Explunging Sword for reaching rank 5 the Inheritor of Excalibur title, while mastering it doubles the title's effects, such as increasing Inferno Torrent 5% damage to 10% if you master uh, the same title as I mentioned before. The tie system is great as it gives you quite a few customization options for each of your characters. There's also the dualizing system, which is basically the crafting system. You can dualize in shops and you just combine materials in order to make any type of item such as food, gels, and even weapons. You can also strengthen your weapon by putting shards in them. Putting shards in them boosts their overall stats and also give them the special effect that that shard has. There is also the elf mixer, which is like the cooking system but more in depth kind of. You can set up numerous items in the elf mixer, and what the mixer will do is create an item if certain conditions are met. The conditions is displayed atop the item, and also how much elf it costs. You can set up food items and books to help you in battle, or set up gel so you don't have to buy them in shops, though do know how much elf you are using in your mixer after each item is created. You can refill the mixer via through the shops or through items. Exploration wise, the game is quite linear, so you won't be able to really explore much till like the last moments of the game. Like, fin think Final Fantasy X, exploration wise. There's also a bit of backtracking, but the backtracking can be offset by the turtle's transportation option. Length wise, it took me about 47 hours to complete the main story arc, and about 13 hours to complete the lineage and legacy arc, so about 60 hours in all, but there's still plenty of content in this game to do, such as the win request. Though the end quests really only consist of fetch quests most of the time, zone cage, arena battles, etc. 
Also note that Tales of Grace F also got a new game plus feature, so there's quite a bit of replay value in it. Overall, the combat system is fantastic and rewards you for utilizing the mechanics to its fullest. There's also a bit of customization via dualizing the entire system. The elements are really adds to the gameplay significantly. Though there are a few issues such as how linear Tales of Grace's F can be, but Tales of Grace F gameplay is still fantastic even with some of the issues. Overall, Tales of Grace F is an amazing RPG. Why the plot of the game is probably one of the weaker parts of the game, mix up for it in the characters. The game visuals are crisp and vibrant, though the textures makes it obvious that this is a port from the Wii to the PS3. The gameplay is fantastic, and ultimately rewards people for understanding the mechanics behind the combat system. It also got quite a bit of customization thanks to dualizing and title system. Each individual character is also a blast to play through. There's also tons of content in Tales of Graces F, with not only the main storyline and future arc, but also extra dungeons, arena battle, side quests, etc. There are issues with the game, such as the textures, soundtrack, how the end requests are mostly just fetch quests, and how linear it can be, but with the gameplay, it ultimately makes up for it. I personally give Tales of Grace F a 9 out of 10. There are a good number of issues with it, but the gameplay more than makes up for those issues in my honest opinion. A man speaks with his back! Really?